how about we go for a nice meal sometime? My treat, of course. Hog? I would, I would definitely, I would totally. Mm. Okay, boys, we're gonna put this up on the big screen. All right, character demo, Toma. The way I see it, housekeeping is a unique skill set. Cleaning, cooking, and mending are among my chat. greatest strengths. I'm not from Inazuma originally. I took a vote all Absolute the way here from beast Mondstadt. Of a man. Inazumans are definitely more particular about etiquette than Mondstatters. True. On that note, if you ever want my lady's opinion, you may have to coax it out of her. She's so polite, she doesn't always speak her mind. People whose attention is always focused on other people's weaknesses tend to expose their own weaknesses pretty easily. Based. Okay, this is kind of way too dang, Chad. There's a lot of swirly camera cutscenes. Check this out. Check this out. Has his eat. Supporting fire. And then his burst. How about we go for a nice meal sometime? My treat, of course. Hog? I would, I would definitely. I would totally. Mm. All right, chat. Those are the trailers. I just wanted to, to pick apart, right? Let's move on to talking about the new weapons. All right, so chat, these are the new four-star weapons coming in the second half of 2.2 alongside whatever the five-star is. We definitely, absolutely, definitely don't know that it's definitely, probably potentially not gonna say who Tal's signature weapon, but we absolutely do not know that. All right, we have Wave Breaker's Fin. This is a four-star weapon with 620 base attack. Staff of Homa has 608 base attack. Now to offset this, Staff of Homa grants 66.2 crit damage. Wavebreaker's Fin basically grants nothing on the on the substat. You guys can see right here, 30.8%, right? So this is just like the Akomaru chat. All of the weapons are from the same kind of category, I would say. At R1, it's a burst damage based polearm. When I first saw this weapon, you guys know that everything in this game all comes down to Xiangling. No matter what. It's another spicy polearm for Xiangling. The low attack percent I discussed right here. This was 10 minutes right after it was posted about three hours ago. Low attack percent is not an issue because you're always going to be pairing Xiangling with Boken to Bennett. So you're going to be getting an attack buff from Bennett anyway, which means that the base attack matters a lot more because your sub stats are going to scale better. I think a lot of people's questions, those of you who are FTP or veteran, is this better than the catch? And the answer is, at equal refinement, yes, but R1 is weaker than R5. R5 catch to R1, R5 catch is better, okay? Because R5 catch grants you 36% elemental burst damage along with 12% crit. The 12% crit is extremely, extremely valuable, right? Higher refinement, Wavebreaker's fins, polearm. Uh, the Akamaru chat, the new Akamaru. At R5, this passive goes to 0.24% up to a maximum of 80%. In order to achieve 80% burst damage, your team needs to have around 320 energy. 320 energy will grant you about 77%. Yeah, so 320 energy, which is four characters with 40 burst, is 77%. In order to maximize this, I believe you need all three characters with 80 energy, along with Raiden Shogun, who has 90. That, I think, gets you to the maximum of 80%. Look at the difference, though. Compare this weapon to this, right? You sacrifice so much of the attack percent, but you gain 620 base attack. For some people, this can be good and bad, right? If you decide to run attack percent, pyro damage, crit rate, Xiangling, this weapon is really good. Because here's the difference, right? The emblem set four piece grants you enough elemental burst damage alongside this weapon's passive that you're more looking for attack percent. And if you're running four emblem set, very likely you don't need super high recharge because you already get 20% from the set. You get, tw you get like 20 to 40% from the substats. And you also most likely have double pyro on your team to assist with energy gain, right? Now the problem is catch is free. If you're completely free to play, right? I honestly think this weapon is only if you get really unlucky and you're trying to pull on the weapon banner. That's literally how it works, right? Because I, I think, well, how many people chat? We don't know, but if Staff of Homa were on Hu Tao's rerun, like the side-by-side, -side, the what character weapon banner, would you guys try to go for her weapon or not? I'm saying that this as a hypothetical situation. I have absolutely no idea. No one knows yet. Would you try for Homa or no? Wow. So actually a lot of people are considering trying for Homa. So that means the qualifications for this polearm become much higher, right? 
that means that more than likely you guys will tr maybe get one to three to maybe even five wave breaker spins if you guys are doing that then there's a potential that this becomes maybe your xiang lings full arm if you don't if you're looking for more damage given that a lot of people may be rolling on the weapon manner upcoming a lot more people are going to have this potential weapon than expected so if you plan on using this on Xiang Ling, equal refinement, Wavebreaker Spin should be better. If you already have R5 catch at level 80 or level 90, I would recommend you not invest into this weapon to save your resources. If, however, you arbitrarily have like 10,000 weapon crystals that you don't use, I guess, then go for it. Level it up. I think I explained that in order to get the maximum value of this, you need 320 or higher energy, right? So you need four units with 80 burst or higher. We only have Raiden Shogun who has higher than 80 burst. So 80, 80, 90 gets you how much? 330 times 0.12 gives you 39.6% chat. So if you have Raiden Shogun and 380 cost burst, you get 39.6% burst damage from this weapon. And at R5, you, you would get 79.3. No, 0 0.2, 79.2%. Does anyone even care about this bow? Like, I'm being honest right now. All, everyone only cares about this polearm. Like, is anyone even actually gonna use this bow? Like, who actually would use this? Let me actually check my character list. Uh, bow. No. What? These are not bow characters. First based Ganyu. Dude, I have. Dude, I'm gonna have a stroke saying that. You can't have me say that again. Holy sh. Venti's damage is mostly from scroll damage, so it's mostly elemental mastery. I mean, I would say, yeah, stringless. I. Venti's. Burst is only 60 cost. Eh, no. Not not a replacement for anything. Aloy, Yoimiya, Diona, Sara, Fischl, Amber? Dude, who designed this bow and who is it for who is it supposed to be for? Only Sara? Okay, I guess if you do burst damage, Sara. <laughs> the base attack is not super significant here. Right, if the base attack were 620, then it'd actually be a good Sar weapon because she transfers off a of base attack. Let's let's go over also the comparison between this polearm and the other other uh, spears that we have. So, these are the polearms that we currently have. Homa is stronger. Jade Spear is used in a different case. Golfing Lightning. This is only for Raiden Shogun. Favonius Lance. This one's more utility based. I think the only comparison is the catch, right? Because it's the only like relatively similar weapon in comparison to all the other ones and we basically basically explained how it works right and i also gave a little bit of uh, advice on specific situations for Xiangling builders dragon's bane Ooh. so here's the thing right if we're talking specifically for Xiangling, dragon's bane r5 versus wave breakers fin r5 80 percent burst damage Versus 36 percent hydro pyro and two hundred one elemental mastery. Now I think this comes down to the elemental mastery and how much you value it, right? So if you have two hundred one elemental mastery from Dragon's Bane and you're looking to reverse vaporize on Xiangli, you're getting okay. Hold on, I need to remove. Are there any pieces that have elemental mastery on my substats? I have twenty three here, two forty nine because the rest she gets from Ascension stat, right? So with dragon's bane and zero elemental mastery substats at level 60 she had at level 7 60 out of 70 she has 249 em that is 42 percent more vaporized melt damage that is definitely more valuable than the wave breaker spin in a standard reverse vaporized composition where you were vaporizing with shaolin's burst dragon's bane is better it's close i would say that the damage difference is actually pretty close but i think that dragon's bane definitely wins the Dragon's Bane is split across two different uh, sources of damage, right? You get 36% Hydro Pyro, and you also get 40% Vaporize. This is strictly 80% burst damage, though it does have higher base attack. I think that with Bennett, that, that kind of shaves down a notch, right? Yeah, I think that's it. I think that R5 Dragon's Bane does eke out a little bit, but because of the Elemental Mastery stat. I think it's really close, though. Any other Polearm characters? Raiden Shogun and Xiang is basically the same, right? Same situation as Xiangling. Oh, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. Sorry, I had to think a little bit. Raiden Shogun is actually worse, right? The weapon is actually worse for Raiden Shogun because Raiden Shogun has immensely higher amounts of elemental burst damage built into her kit. Emblem set, stacking billions of recharge along with her elemental skill means that she already has so much. 
So the gain from that weapon is not as significant, which means it's not not a significant, like, it's not a better option. Okay, because we don't want to over cap so much. Want to focus more on crit rate, crit damage if you have a shit ton of elemental burst damage, right? And attack percent. Hu Tao burst damage nuke, I guess, but at that point, you're probably a whale that has C6 Hu Tao, so no. XD, this is not a Xiao weapon. Please do not use this. Please do not use this weapon on Xiao. Rosaria. Actually, Rosaria is actually not a bad choice. Given that Rosaria, in most cases, is a support DPS, not a bad choice. The only problem, though, most Rosaria players have her on high crit rate for her uh, talent transfer, right? So I think that if you if you are using Rosaria, you most likely have her on like Deathmatch or Jade Spear. Rosaria is not like an immediate use for a lot of people. But I would say that if you wanted to try it out, it would work. F2Ps who want crit rate pass, uh, crit rate transfer can just use White Tassel. I totally forgot about this. This is a good thing to mention. Rosaria has a weapon for her crit rate transfer on all stars, right? White Tassel, Deathmatch, and Jade Spear. So I don't think I don't think you need to. Because the most valuable part of Rosaria's kit is her crit transfer. Hey, you do frogs. I do not know how to record a video on stream anymore. I'm having very, very, very uh, uh, English. Uh, I'm having a lot of trouble, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This video is mostly discussing cons, the pros and cons of the new... Dude, you guys know what the video is about, okay? I can't do the outro. Bye. I lo love you guys. Thanks for everything. I have, to I have... Dude, I am a mess today. Goodbye. Thank you for watching, YouTube, bros. We'll see you on the next video. Holy crap.